Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. So, how is it going? Thank you so much everyone for coming. Thank you so much to my team and my friends also who are here to cheer me up. Really grateful to all of you. Uh, so today, we are going to witness a magical act without the wizard's hat because the wizard uh, you know, has to travel 30 hours from India. So the wizard is a little jet lagged <laughs> and forgot his wizard, uh, wizard hat at home. But never mind, we are going to still see the act. And uh, as we can see, the title of the talk is uh, Unraveling the Magical Act of Docker Slim Minifying Container Images. How many of you have heard about Docker Slim? Wow, great. So, who is a magician for today? Uh, my name is Mrityanjay Sharma and I have been a uh, contributor to Docker Slim for about more than like uh, seven months now. And as an open source contributor, I have been uh, involved with a lot of open source communities for more than two years now. Uh, introducing a little bit about myself. So currently I'm a student. I'm still a student. I'm pursuing bachelor's in computer science engineering from uh, GSS Academy of Technical Education, NOIDA. Uh, it's a small college in India. Uh, so from there, I'll be graduating in August 2022. Other than that, I am uh, currently uh, like uh, contributing to a lot of open source projects. Previously, I have been a Google Summer of Code scholar twice, uh, once with uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and uh, other than that, with RTMS also. Open Source Summit has mattered a lot to me because it has helped me begin with my open source journey in 2019. So today, uh, it's my first time that I'm speaking uh, at the Open Source Summit. Uh, the last time when I attended it, I was an attendee. So, introduction and all is done. The background is set. Now let's talk about the origin of this magical portion of this magic that we are going to see today. So, how did this journey be begin? Let's go back to 2013. So, uh, as far as I remember, I have, I mean, okay, it's kind of general knowledge, but yeah, Docker was introduced in 2013, if I'm not wrong, but Linux containers existed before that. So, what Docker did for Linux uh, containers or for containers in general was what Apple did with smartphones. So, like smartphones existed before iPhone, but iPhone, uh, I mean, uh, uh, those who are not Apple fans may not agree with that, but iPhones usually uh, made the user experience a little more better. So that's what Docker, in a way, we can, if, if we want to take an analogy, did for the containers. They enhance the user experience, of course. That's great. But people who used to work with production use cases often face two challenges. What are the containers production ready? And how and what were the major problems, pain, pain points in those uh, in understanding it? So the two major pain points were that are they secure? Are they performance optimized? Now this is something that was a problem to a lot of developers and to the developer who created also faced this challenge created this project called Docker Slim. We, we are going to talk about that later, how it was created, but yeah. So what happened was that the Docker community organized a hackathon called Docker Hack Day in Seattle in 2015. So there, a uh, lot of projects were being made, a lot of ideas were being discussed, but one man was trying to solve a problem that most of the developers uh, were facing, but they were not uh, trying to think in that direction that how minifying containers size itself can play a large role in not only making your image size smaller but also making them more secure. And that laid the foundation of Docker Slim. So Docker Slim is created by Kylie Quest. Uh, he uh, I mean, before talking about him and how he impacted my journey also, uh, let's talk about that hackathon. So in that hackathon, this 
tool was not only it won the first prize, but it also won in the second prize in the global plumber category for that. And uh, this tool was originated there. And he himself called this, why, why I tried to take a magical kind of idea, because he, when he, when he produced this tool, he, he called it the magical pill for securing and minifying your images. So uh, that, uh, that, that uh, thing, uh, I saw a tweet seven or eight months back, which talked about this, and that actually made me curious to learn about it. And since then, I have been involved with Docker Slim community. So uh, other than that, he has been like working with, he has a lot of experience. He, I think, worked with Cisco also previously. And uh, I, I, I started my, when I, I remember that when I started learning Golang, because mostly when you work with cloud native technologies or containers or Docker in general, you, you need to know Go if you are a contributor. So when I started with my Golang journey, I remember that I started with his blog, 50 Shades of Golang. And I didn't know that this man was also the creator of Docker Slim. So uh, it was a funny uh, 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 like title because it, it relates with other things also. But yeah, I, I love the blog. And from that blog, I learned a lot. Now, what sets Docker Slim apart? Like, why, uh, why Docker Slim? Because there are various other methods also where, where you can minify your images. So like, it, although it depends on a particular image, but, but it, 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 it can be said that for most of the container images, it can minify your image by 30x, 30 factors. So that's a huge you know, difference that can set apart your performance. Not only performance, it can increase the speed of your, how, how you are going to spin up your containers how, in, your, uh, in, your, in a production environment. Not only that, you can analyze what's happening, what's happening, and you can even talk to the, uh, uh, not only the Docker, slim containers, but even the intermediate container that is created to minify the container. That, that's, that's what we are going to discuss next, how, how, how this magic happens. Before we move to the demo, we need to know how this magic happens, how, how does this work. So not only that, you can x-ray your images. And of course, it also builds security profiles like app uh, uh, and circle. Uh, uh, the, uh, thus, it, it, it makes your applications even more secure and more optimized. Now let's talk about how, before we talk about what it does through the live demo, I mean, let's see if the demo gods will be with me because they weren't in the, they weren't with me in the morning. I was trying a lot, so I have a pre-recorded demo already. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about how Docker Slim makes image sec smaller, faster and more secure. So if I, I'm not going to the code walkthrough because code walkthrough would be another talk. But if we go to Docker Slim code, there are two things. One is the main Docker Slim binary and the other thing is sensor. So it's the sensor which injects uh, the monitoring, the multiple uh, tracing tools in a temporary container that is created from the fat image. So suppose you have uh, uh, like in this example, they have taken an NGX image. So yeah, uh, the input is a fat image. You have your large size image ready. It's okay. It's fine. But what happens next is that Docker Slim creates a temporary container. So in that temporary container, all the magic happens. That it it, it basically does in three steps. You can call uh, like it, it, it does the static analysis. The static analysis is like it it, it assesses and collects things which are not going to be used after being created later. And it uh, tries to abstract away from being implemented or being later on carried, ca increasing just the weight of the container directly. In that temporary container, all the collection of intelligence happens, both the static and the dynamic analysis. After that, what happens that uh, uh, it, 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 it applies all your heuristics, uh, whether uh, you know, like it, it finds your SSL certificates, it detects whether they are shells, and then it, 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 it creates the usage report and make your slim image almost ready 
uh, for you know uh, to see like whatever you had earlier it's going to be more optimized more slim but it's still going to be functional it's not going to change anything that that, 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 that that's going to do in your application so uh, that's that's how that's the beauty of this tool that it basically builds upon the top of the temporary container that's just that's main idea is to minify your image after that you have your output as a slim image and it can be used for the future container runs so that was a brief uh, uh, overview how docker slim uh, works how how it works internally now uh, i think we'll move to demo so just to let me go to the terminal yeah so i'll i'll go with a <laughs> pre recorded demo because there are some issues in my laptop like it wasn't working some some problem so uh, thank you so much for understanding but yeah uh, playing the demo uh, we'll we'll be able to talk about more how and see it in action so let's see first of all we'll see what what's the so it's it's a docker image that we already had uh, it's a node docker image uh, and um, as we can see the initial size is 432 mb now what will happen is that now we are going to run the build command so the build command is the most used command uh, that actually minifies that actually does the magic it also produces a security profile uh, and uh, extra command is used when you need to know the more detailed more heuristics about your uh, things stuff and now as you can see the application uh, the docker slim tool is running So by default, HTTP probe is on. However, if your application is not exposing ports, you can of course like uh, uh, turn it off. But for this application, for, for this use case, we we had to use it. So now we are going to test the size of the new image, the slim image that we have created. So if you look at it, 14 MB. So from 432 MB to 14 MB, and having the same use case as you had earlier uh, this is magical and that happened with that temporary container inside actually it, it 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 analyzed and collected all the information that you already have but it, it's still taking up the size now uh, so so this was a, a live uh, i will not call it live but a pre recorded live demo of how uh, we minify docker uh, images and uh, now moving back to the slides yeah so uh, these are the additional resources that we have uh, if you want uh, to uh, uh, let me do it uh, full screen yeah so these are some additional resources like if you want to contribute to Docker Slim C. Uh, one of the fundamental ideas behind all the open source projects that I have learned myself as a student is that if you want something, uh, you not only ask, you can even contribute directly. So I would love uh, that you can uh, you all join our community. We are active on Discord. We, we have a GitHub repository. Uh, a lot of things have to be done. A lot of things are in the pipeline. One of the things that are in the pipeline is supporting Docker Compose for this. So uh, we are looking forward for that. Uh, then we have our origin story that I just talked about today. And, and uh, there are multiple blogs on how we usually reduce like not only Node, but Python images and other thing. And, and um, uh, that's mostly about how, how, how your use case is. It, it, it can it, it it has a like uh, let me show you the docker slim examples uh, repository it has a, a lot of a lot of examples uh, uh, to be so yeah so this link has a lot of examples like for from Java to Node Image to Python to Ruby 
to test out and, and mostly they are just you know you, we can do it with just make commands so because uh, we have made we have uh, uh, mostly scriptified them actually so it can be easily tested out by you and uh, other than that uh, 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 I will say that here are various examples like depending upon uh, what kind of image that you have these are examples of how many how, uh, by how many factors they have minified they were minified in the uh, example so like if you see the Ubuntu image that we saw it was minified by 30x and similarly if it's uh, it, it, it it was alpine so this was a smaller image in itself so even after minifying it was reduced to 34 MB but uh, but it's still better so these are the multiple examples to look out. Uh, other than that, I think uh, we are done with the most of the contents of the talk, and I, I would love to like discuss with all of you with, with, if you have any questions, if you have any 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 suggestions for us, uh, how to improve, and what to what ideas do you have, what use cases do you have uh, to learn better, to improve the performance of Docker Slim also better. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, sorry, can you please have a, I, I, it was not voluble. Uh, I think they are giving you a mic. Um, will it generate any report uh, to show us what exactly it removed to slim down the Docker image? Yeah, you can actually talk about that using X-ray, uh, X-ray command. So, uh, with the X-ray command, you will have access to you know, whatever whatever has been removed, what what uh, what 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 it does, how it minified, and in fact, you can even talk to your temporary containers uh, uh, with the, uh, the. There's a command for that, I think. Uh, as far as I remember, let me show you. Uh, yeah, so even even the temporary containers can be talked directly. So that's that's an interesting use case and interesting question. So uh, when we talk about the site, uh, and we we can even have the sidecar containers, which which can actually help you out, uh, uh, not only uh, 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 seeing what has happened, but also debugging the con the slim the, slim, the minified container. So uh, uh, this is uh, available on the GitHub repo, and we can check more about that. But yeah, using the X-ray command, you can you can optim you can understand w w the insights of what has happened, the report, uh, as you were talking about. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't know. So I don't know a lot about Docker or Docker Slim. Okay. Uh, containers are big, okay? And if Docker Slim can optimize that, why don't, why doesn't everyone use it? If it, if it, if it, you know, optimizes the code, if it reduces and does so, not make any change. So, 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 it, it is not necessary that containers are always big, right? It depends on uh, your particular Docker file and what application that you are building, right? And whether it will serve your purpose or right. And it also depends uh, on on the security profile that you are trying to inject in your containers. So it, it depends again on the use case, but it's it's being used, and that's why it's a very popular project. If you look at uh, even the stars, it has more than thirteen thousand stars. So uh, people are using it. However, uh, yeah, it depends again uh, on what specific use case do you want to use. So if if I am a developer, and if I have like I personally used it for my Golang project. And it minified my images a uh, bench by a 12, 12 factor. So uh, I, I use that, but it again depends like what what the user and the developer experience is all about. And mostly, who who, who doesn't love uh, a, sl a more slim image, right? Yeah. So is there like a trade-off of minifying it? Do you lose any features or anything like that? Essentially not. But at times you might need to talk and see what happens. That's why we have the sidecar facility to see uh, what can be improved, what, what are we losing something that uh, might be important to us. And that's why talking, we, we have this facility of talking to the temporary container as well as to the slim image. 
Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for the talk, Mrajanjay. Uh, I just had one question. So, uh, coming into a more complex use case, uh, like let's say you are building a microservices-based architecture, so you might have multiple services, uh, right. each having their separate images, right. and you're using something like Docker Compose up, and in that you sort of specify within the YAML file, you specify which particular image needs to be invoked. Mm -hmm. For example, you start by invoking your MongoDB right. instance, and then you invoke your backend, and then right. your frontend. So, uh, when you have the, such kind of a complex use case, we have sort of defined in which way the images need to start booting up. Uh, is there any facility within Docker Slim that sort of manages this? Or, uh, I mean, how does Docker Slim take into consideration multi-image approach or a project that has multiple images? Right. So, this is something that, uh, 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 not only an interesting question, but something that I will be working on very soon after my graduation. So, uh, we are already actually working on, it's a work in progress about the uh, experimental Docker Compose support and various, uh, like like Docker Compose support wasn't there in in its full form and it's not even there right now. But yeah, it's a work in progress and uh, very soon uh, this complex use case that you talked about is actually uh, one of, will be one of the brownie points for people using Docker Slim. So it's, it's definitely an improvement that we will be working on and in fact I will be working on after a couple of months. Yeah. I guess what I was going to ask is uh, on average how much manual effort is needed to exercise the container for, um, for software you write it would be quite straightforward but for uh, if you were taking existing commercial software and trying to run it through Slim have you found you need to do a lot of manual effort to make sure Slim identifies all the required files? Uh, beg your pardon, I, I missed some parts. I mean, like, I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it hits the probe and, and probes the software to make sure it exercises and right. it identifies the files that need to be, that aren't in use to be removed. Am I understanding the design, right? Right. And so for how much effort is that step in your experience to fully exercise software? Like, uh, it depends on how you start uh, 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 using Docker Slim itself, like if you are a, if you have just started with that, so sometimes the time of understanding the project because again it's a developer oriented tool, so uh, it's not uh, end user or. I guess that's what I was going to say. To the extent it's a developer oriented tool, that answer makes sense. But have you found it appropriate to use on existing commercial software, existing containers that you didn't develop? Uh, yeah, uh, like. Uh, I, like I haven't used myself directly, but uh, I think so that uh, some of my uh, colleagues might have worked and, and they would have worked with that. So I, I, I'm not sure about that personally. But yeah, it has been used in production use cases, uh, definitely. One example that I have, I think uh, Nirmata, Nirmata also uses is for uh, Kaiverno because I work, I have worked with Kaiverno. So Kaiverno, uh, Kaiverno uh, example is one such example which, which is being used in production use case about that. Right, so one of the major plans that we have ahead is about introducing the Docker Compose feature. And the other thing that we are going to work is on that the HTTP probe right now, it works internally, it, it talks internally uh, to the, uh, uh, you know, the temporary container. That's, that's what we are going to, you know, uh, not do that directly. We are, we are, we are going to uh, use the tra traditional way of talking to a HTTP API. So, so that's what, uh, uh, that, that will not only help us uh, increase the current flow of Docker Slim, that's how it's working, but it would also uh, help uh, the experience of the SaaS application that's being built over there. Yeah, so that's, that, that they are the two major things that uh, we can see. Uh, other than that, I think uh, in, the slim, in, the doc, in the Docker desktop extension, it's, uh, it's already there, uh, uh, the slim.ai. 
uh, tool to uh, to actually just you know don't even you don't even have to use those terminal commands just a click to minify your images. Do we have virtual uh, questions? Okay. If you if you wish to connect with me, even post this talk or anything like any anything like you would like to talk about, uh, we can we can connect on Twitter. This is my Twitter handle, and this is my email ID. So we would definitely love to chat more about. Uh, open source in general or docker sim later uh, and if uh, thank you so much to everyone for attending the talk uh, it's, it's been really great really great thing.